Hi, I'm Nate Capa from Bremer Prosthetics, and I'm a certified prosthetist. And I'm Scott Bronick with Bremer Prosthetics, and I am a certified prosthetist. And today we're gonna to talk about transfemoral suspension. A transfemoral prosthesis is another name for an above the knee prosthesis. And so historically, above the knee prosthesis has been held on by suction, right with the socket being right up next to your skin, uh, belts, suspenders, um, and though that's pretty much, I mean, people holding much. onto it with their hands. I mean, people really did rudimentary things to keep a mm -hmm. above the knee prosthesis in place for years and years and years. Yep. Over the past 20 years or so, we've started incorporating silicone liners into the design of the prosthesis. So the silicone liner is a nice interface between your limb and the, and the socket. So it helps to kind of protect your limb. It gives, it provides some cushioning and it also helps to keep some friction and shear forces off your leg especially when you start to perspire. So the liner rolls onto your limb and, and is attached by suction to your limb. And then once that, that is, there's a small hole with this. This is called a attachment, a sus, a pin locking su, a suspension attachment. Pin locking mechanism. And, <laughs> and so what happens is this pin aligns with the hole in the bottom of the prosthesis. And you can see this little, the button will spin here. If it's a snug fit, you can even take and, and turn that in to make sure that it's fully engaged. Mm -hmm. that, liner, that liner provides all the suspension for the prosthesis that holds everything in place. When it's time to take that off, you push the button, hold it in, and it, slip, and it slips out. Um, this is a, a good suspension for people who are kind of learning how to use their prosthesis. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does offer good positive suspension, but a drawback is that it only holds on in the bottom. So it does allow, allow for mm -hmm. some elongation. Um, a lot of the above the knee liners have really been made with fabrics that prevent elongation. So I'm, you can see I'm trying to pull this and you're not seeing it stretch very much. Whereas if you're trying to use a below the knee pros, uh, liner with your above the knee prosthesis, there's a lot more elongation. So you're not gonna have as good a suspension. So where the gel liners have really changed things up as far as uh, aiding in suspension, two things are gonna cause skin breakdown inside of, inside of the prosthetic socket. It's gonna be either pressure or friction. Um, with the gel liner on the bone, and it's different than with the transtibial because with the femur or the transfemoral, we have a lot of soft tissue on the thigh, but mm -hmm. there can be some prominent bony areas uh, everybody's limb is different, bone spurs. So it does add a layer of protection, which it can be significant for some individuals. Um, but it's a reason why a skin fit suction socket worked a lot better for somebody who was a transfemoral back in the day than it would for would have for a transtibial right. amputee. And, um, and why there's still a lot of times where a skin fit suction may still be a good option for somebody that's a transfemoral amputee. Yes. When we talk about friction inside of the inside of the prosthetic socket, this gel liner there's suction that's created when you roll this on the residual limb. So it minimizes movement of the residual limb inside of the liner and all the friction is on the outside. Um, one of the things to note or something to note uh, when you're thinking about how prosthetic suspension works in particular for transfemorals and how it's different than uh, transtibial amputees, even if you're a transtibial or transfemoral, the longer your residual limb is, the more surface area we have to work with. Um, but when we get into uh, transfemoral amputees, if you have a shorter residual limb as a transtibial, you could still wear a suspension sleeve to create a seal mm -hmm. because you seal above where that area is. The shorter your limb is, um, the fact that, and that used to be a problem where you don't have as much surface area or limb. So a lot of times we couldn't fit some of these transfemoral amputees with prosthetic limb, limbs that we could suspend properly. Uh, the gel liner really changed things so we could get people with shorter residual limbs into normal uh, narrow ML or normal socket designs uh, that made them very functional prosthetic limbs and increased their level of functional activity. And with the silicone liner to be, and there's an even simpler way, um, which would mean that it, instead of having the pin installed, it would have a long strap that has Velcro on it. That strap would then be fed through a hole and pulled tight and then, and then fixed to the front of the socket mm -hmm. to hold everything on. That's called a lanyard suspension. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the real problems with, with using a pin is aligning the pin with the hole. And so 
especially for somebody who's a transfemoral, you may have to stand up to die on your prosthesis with a pin. So if you're somebody that has that balance is an issue or you worry about being able to do that repeatedly, um, something that has a strap that you can pull a fix, then, when, then you can stand up and tighten things up and feel more safe. Now, would that so. still be considered a locking suspension? It is still considered a locking suspension, yes. There are also liners that don't have a pin that can be used for the above knee, and this is a below the knee option, but I just wanna show that the bottom doesn't have a plastic umbrella, mm -hmm. no place for a pin. And then, so this would be donned first, and then you can don a sealing membrane over top of that. This creates suction along the socket walls. So when this expands by the liner and slides into the socket, it, mm -hmm. creates, it creates suction. Where the um, seal hits the socket wall, that creates um, where the suspension, the suction will be from that right. point on down inside of the socket. So a real benefit to that is with the pin, it's only held on by the bottom. By using this, you can move this higher up your thigh so that you're creating the suspension and suction up on, with more surface area, more of your limb is, is inside that mm -hmm. suction. So it's gonna reduce that up and down movement, that pistoning in the socket. Mm -hmm. um, there are also more advanced means of suspension. Uh, one that we do a lot here is called a double socket wall. Um, that's a more advanced design. It, it becomes very, very critical about putting it on the same way every time. Yes. It's, it's, once the prosthesis has been put on, it's not adjustable until it's been taken off and then repositioned. Yeah. So that's one big downfall. The, the, the real benefit to it is that it allows for suction and a suspension sleeve yes. inside of a transfemoral prosthesis, which is something that just increases the surface area of that suspension and weight bearing. Which is why I wanted to mention that right. earlier because surface area is so important and that's the biggest obstacle we try to overcome to get the best suction suspension system of a transfemoral right. residual limb. Right, so. the, the higher up, especially with, a, with an above the knee, and I mean, it, it holds for below the knee, but especially for an above the knee, the higher up that we can create that suspension, the more it's gonna feel like the prosthesis moves with you yeah. instead of you're picking it up and it's lagging behind. Well, yes. A couple points, I mean, increased suspension means increased proprioception. Yep. I mean, you have not only the weight, I mean, if you, you increase uh, suspension or you can upgrade your suspension, uh, the leg is going to feel lighter. So what's proprioception? Proprioception is knowing where your uh, limb is in relation to space. So that would mean if um, I wear a prosthetic limb, mine is below the knee, so it's not exactly the same. But if we had a number grid and Nate was to say, say the one was here and the two was here and the three was here, and you wanted to go one, two, three, and hit with my heel every time, uh, that's what we were discussing when we talk about proprioception, having complete control of that residual limb, which if you're early in the process, you, that may seem difficult, but uh, with proper training and the right fitting prosthesis and suspension, uh, those things can be, those goals can be achieved. So if you have any questions about, about any of these suspension mechanisms, whether it's above the knee or below the knee, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to explain, expand on what we explained and give some more information or feel free to call us directly at 810-733-3375 or 989-249-9400.